What is globalization? Globalization can usefully be conceived as a process, which embodies a transformation in the spatial organization of social relations and transactions, generating transcontinental or interregional flows and networks of activity, interaction, and power. It is characterized by four types of change. First, it involves a stretching of social, political, and economic activities across political frontiers, regions, and continents. Second, it suggests the intensification, or the growing magnitude, of interconnectedness, and flows of trade, investment, finance, migration, culture, etc. Third, the growing extensity and intensity of global interconnectedness can be linked to a speeding up of global interactions and processes. As the evolution of worldwide systems of transport and communication increases the velocity of the diffusion of ideas, goods, information, capital, and people. Fourth, the growing extensity, intensity, and velocity of global interactions can be associated with their deepening impact, such that the effects of distant events can be highly significant elsewhere and even the most local developments may come to have enormous global consequences. In this sense, the boundaries between domestic matters and global affairs can become increasingly blurred. Globalization has three definitions. There are more trade transactions, communications, services and multinational companies across the border. There are more travels and cooperation between different countries. A global and integrated economic system has been formed in the world. One country does not depend on itself only, but countries interact more with each other in terms of production and consumption.
A further example of endangered species is the shark. Around 40 million sharks are killed each year. That's quite a lot. Consequently, the number of sharks is decreasing. So let's take a closer look at the causes of this. Firstly, in recent decades, sharks have become important. This is largely due to the growing popularity in some parts of the world for the consumption of shark. It has become a very valuable food source. Okay, so maybe you're thinking, well, lots of other fish like cod, salmon, or tuna are caught for human consumption, and they aren't disappearing at the same rate as sharks. Well, that's true. But the difference here is sharks are not able to repopulate or reproduce themselves quickly like the other types of fish that are commonly fished as a food source. Why? Because sharks are slow breeders. Sharks mature slowly and it takes them years to reach the age for egg production. And then they produce only a few eggs so that means just a few new sharks. Humans have a 9-month pregnancy or gestation period whereas some shark species are thought to have extremely long gestation periods, as long as 3 years. This makes them much more vulnerable and in danger of dying out than many other fish species. Each year on the third Monday of January schools, federal offices, post office and banks across America close as we celebrate the newest American national holiday. Fifteen years after Dr. King's death, President Ronald Reagan signed a bill into law making the third Monday of January a national holiday celebrating the birth and life of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. But it was a tough time getting the bill passed. First, a bill had to be introduced by a member of the House of Representatives. The Speaker of the House assigned the bill to a committee where the bill was discussed in detail. Meetings were held where supporters and opponents could discuss their positions. The committee then agreed that bill should be sent to a vote. The Rules Committee scheduled a debate on the issue. The House of Representatives then voted on the bill. It passed the House with a vote of 338 to 90. Then it was sent to the Senate. Again, the issue of the King holiday had to pass through committees and public hearings before a final vote was taken. There were many who opposed the idea. America had only honored two individuals with national holidays, George Washington and Christopher Columbus. Many felt that there were other Americans that deserved a national holiday, such as Abraham Lincoln and John F. Kennedy. It's been a challenging decade for the music industry, with a significant decrease in sales. For years, little action was taken against illegal downloads, with few effects for downloaders. However, two new approaches are seeing positive results. Firstly, the industry's working with internet service providers to slow an illegal downloader's connection. Secondly, it's working directly with digital music websites. In Sweden, three out of five illegal file sharers have cut back or stopped, with half of these people moving to legal websites supported by advertisements. Few cities had a worse location than St. Petersburg in Russia. In 1703, Russian Tsar Peter I began building a great European city for himself, St. Petersburg. There were three main problems with the city. Firstly, he decided to construct his beautiful capital at the mouth of a river. The land around the site was underwater most of the time and was either frozen or flooded. Over a hundred thousand construction workers died working in such difficult conditions. The second problem was the availability of construction workers. Few people lived in that area. 
and the high death rate meant that Peter needed to bring in a constant supply of replacement workers from other parts of Russia using the military service system. He ordered 40,000 men each year to go and work on his capital. The men were expected to provide their own tools and food for the journey, often with soldiers watching over them, and they were chained together to prevent them from running away. Illness was everywhere, and punishments went from whipping to death. The final problem was supplying the materials themselves. Whole forests were cleared to provide wood hills flattened and leagues filled in. Stone became so hard to find that Peter banned anyone else in Russia from using it. It was a truly impossible city to build and made him unpopular. Although the original American Indian cultures were highly diverse, they were similar in many of their tradition. Religious beliefs and rituals permeated every aspect of Indian life. Southwest tribes, such as the Hopi and the Apaches, had a rich and elaborate year-round sequence of ceremonials including songs, dances, and poetry. The Hopi performed dances to bring rain. The Apaches engaged in special dances and ceremonies to gain the support of the spirits before undertaking raids or going into war. The Plains tribes often sought contact with the spirits by going on a vision quest. Yeah, inferential statistics is a formalized body of methods for solving another class of problems that present great difficulties for the unaided human mind. This general class of problems characteristically involves attempts to make predictions, using a sample of observations. For example, a school superintendent wishes to determine the proportion of children in a large school system who come to school without breakfast, have been vaccinated for flu or whatever. Having little knowledge of statistics, the superintendent would know that it is unnecessary and inefficient to question each child. The proportion for the entire district could be estimated fairly accurately from a sample of a few as a hundred children bus. This is inferential statistics is to predict or estimate characteristics of a population from a knowledge of the characteristics of only a sample. It's not easy being yellow. Bananas now face two separate fungal epidemics, which threaten to pluck the fruit off of our tables. Fortunately, researchers have now sequenced banana DNA, producing the genome of a banana variety that may hold the secret to defeating the diseases. The report is in the journal Nature. Today, half of all bananas, including the ones you probably buy, belong to the Cavendish variety, whose popularity stems in part from having no seeds. But this trait also removes sexual reproduction from the equation. 
The bananas are thus all genetically identical and identically vulnerable to the two fungal epidemics, Panama disease and black leaf streak disease. Researchers sequenced the genome of a banana variety called D.H. Pang whose genes contributed to the Cavendish. While the genome shows where this fruit fits in the history of plant evolution, it could also help researchers understand why D.H. Pan, unlike its descendant, is resistant to the funguses behind both Panama and black leaf streak disease. Knowing the genes responsible for this resistance could help breeders create stronger, more resistant bananas, which has a lot of appeal. In the celebrity vaccine wars, I'm siding with actress Amanda Peet. And comedian Bill Maher, well, I like your show. But when it comes to vaccines, you don't know a punchline from a clothesline. Maher recently tweeted to his Twitter followers, if you get a swine flu shot, you are an idiot. On his HBO program Real Time last week, Maher went head-to-head -head with former Senator Dr. Bill Frist, who patiently explained why vaccines were in fact good. But Maher wasn't buying it. He advocates a healthy lifestyle over vaccines. But polio and smallpox outmatched many robust immune systems. Actress Amanda Peet, meanwhile, has used her celebrity to encourage vaccinations, specifically in response to the alleged vaccine autism connection, for which there is no scientific evidence, but which has some parents afraid of childhood vaccinations. In a letter to a parenting magazine, Pete wrote it's irresponsible to suggest that virtually the entire medical community and the CDC and the American Academy of Pediatrics are behind a massive cover-up about vaccine safety. See you in the line for the flu shot. Participants were initially selected from a range of foundation subjects. Physical health can be improved by regular training.
Psychologists say what we have experienced influences our behaviors. 